I want you to bow down your head for a word of prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you this morning and this day. We are grateful for the gift of life that you have given unto us. This morning we have no power of our own, Lord. But that we run to you knowing that everything is of thee and is for thee. Father, Lord, we've come to seek strength. For whenever we are weak, you are strong. So strengthen us, Lord. Strengthen us in our spirit, man. In the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, this morning, we ask for you to fill us more and more and more. Enter me, Lord, that I may preach your word. Anoint me, Lord, with the fresh oil, Lord, and baptize me with the fire, Lord, that I may speak that which you put in my mouth to tell your people. I have no power of my own. I have no church of my own, for it is your church. And you said you will build it, and the gate of hell shall not prevail against. You said if only we will, we will exalt Jesus, then he will draw men unto himself. Lord Jesus, draw men unto yourself as we exalt your name this day, Lord. Let your word be established today. Let your word have free course. Let your word transform. Let your word heal. Let your word encourage and build your people up in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. O oh Lord God, Father Lord, anoint the ears of your people to hear. Anoint their heart, Lord, to receive the word of God. And let the word of God bring change into their life. This morning, everyone under the sound of my voice, whether in the auditorium or wherever they may be connecting from, through the social media platforms, Father, Lord, oh God, visit them, visit them, visit them, and visit them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Do a new thing with your people today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, oh Lord. Any word that will exalt itself, anything that will exalt itself against the knowledge of your word, we stand and Lord, we bring that thing under judgment, Lord, and we condemn it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Anything that will be a distraction, anything that will be a blockade to the flow of your word, we come against it in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. And let everybody say amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. God bless you. All of you connecting on social media, I see you all. God bless you. Continue continue to stay with us. The Lord will bless you today. This is the first Sunday of the year 2024. Amen? And it is a privilege to be alive today. Are we able to project the scripture? Amen. God bless you. We are alive today by the grace of God. For many are those who sought for an opportunity to see this day, but they could not. But we are here, and therefore we will take it and then be thankful to God for this day. I want you to understand something today. That the theme that God gave to us for the year 2024 our year of the faith walk it is not just an ordinary walk if you treat it as an ordinary walk you will make a mistake and you will lose out on it all days are not the same all months are not the same all years are not the same if you treat everything as same you are making a mistake and you will not be able to benefit from that season. So when the Lord God said unto us that this year is the year of the faith walk, we are required as a people, you who receive the word, to walk according to what God has said. Amen. 
And so today I'm going to be talking to you concerning absorbing the promises of God. Absorbing the promises of God. When we speak of absorbing, we are talking about you ingesting or digesting the word of God into your life. Absorb the promises of God into your system, into your heart, into your being. The promise was concerning you coming to church. If you tell me you will come to church, I don't expect you to show up at my house. Right? Promise you gave that this Sunday I'll be in church. And so you have to be in church. You don't have to go to my house. You won't find me there. So it is a declaration. You declare something or you give an assurance that you would do a particular thing. In other words, you can see and you can see that it's an assurance that a thing will definitely be done. Or you give an undertaking that you will do a thing. The promise of God. Maybe you are wondering why is Pastor Benji talking about the promise of God. This is the beginning of a new year. And in this new year, you need to first of all understand that if you are walking with God, you need to understand what God has said and what God wants to do in your life and what God wants to do in a particular season. If you become aware of the things that God wants to do, it is easy for you to finish the year and finish the year very well. You need clear cut instruction you need to know the vision what is the vision what is the plan until you've come to a place where your life is based on a certain vision and a certain plan you will not get anywhere many are those who enter into relationships they enter into businesses they enter into all manner of things without a clear-cut vision without a direction without knowing what is in it for me don't just get into a relationship because you are getting old and i'm old i have come of age and so it is time for me to also have a woman in my life a man in my life who said that you meeting a man a woman means that it is going to end in a marriage or it's going to end in whatever you you were perceiving it to be Perception is not the same as reality. And so if you make up your mind that you want to work with God, you must know what God has said. You must know what is in it for you. Am I talking to somebody? If you don't know what is in it for you, then it will not benefit you. <laughs> Somebody say promises. Hallelujah. Is the Facebook acting up? Why is mine spinning over here? It's working over there. Yeah? Okay. All right. It is working. Thank you, Jesus. If you decide to work with God, you must know what is in it for you. God, if you want me to abandon everything and follow you, what is in it for me? Hallelujah. God understands business. <laughs> he understands business. He understands. And so, beginning the year... You must know what it is that is in God. That if you make up your mind and you want to pursue him, you must pursue him for what is in him to obtain the promise. What is the assurance that God is giving to me? What is the assurance that if I do this, if I commit my life to you, 
what am I going to get from it? Because human beings as we are, if human being gives you a promise, they can fail. A human being gives you a promise, oh, I tell you, most cases they will fail you. But whenever you are dealing with God, God is not a man that he shall lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. And say, I said this to you, but I lied. I cannot do it. God does not operate in this manner. If there is anything you need to understand, God operates according to seasons and times. And whenever the seasons and times, they align whatever it is that God said to you, it will come together. When they come together, know also that God gives a promise for a particular reason. The promise that God gives, it has to be in alignment with the assignment that God has given to you. It must bring honor and glory to God. As for the blessings that comes with the promises, you will get it. As for the benefits, you will get it. But the ultimate thing is that that thing, that promise, it must bring honor and glory to God. And so you must know what it is that God has for you, what God has prepared for you in the year 2024. Amen? So that is the reason why I am talking to you about promises. I needed to understand that in the Bible, there are over 8,000 promises in the Bible alone. Amen. The Bible has how many? Over 8,000 promises in there. So imagine that you alone, if you can strive and push hard, you can have 8,000 things manifesting in your life. We can share this 8,000 among ourselves and everybody will be cool. Hallelujah. And there will be no envy. There will be no jealousy. There will be no, you know, bitterness or anger anywhere. God has promises in his word for over 8,000 of them for you alone. Eight, over 8,000 assurances for you alone. That he wants to do something great in your life. He wants to turn your life around. He wants your life to become a signpost for the people who are out of this frame. For the people in the world. For those who have never ever heard nor believed in this God. You alone there are 8,000. This 8,000 should be enough to draw some people to your God. They must come to a place and ask your sister, brother. What is the name of this your God that you are summoning? Hallelujah. I heard a story, a man of God preached. He said that there was this atheist who, you know what atheists do? They don't believe in God, so anything you say for them, it's a lie. They think we are crazy. Imagine a fallen man thinking that you, you are crazy. Hallelujah. There is nothing that you say that they, they believe. They always want to find, they are using their human wisdom, human mind. That mind that is just about just a tiny percentage of who God is. They want to use it to disprove that their God is alive and that God exists. And so this man, he saw a man of God. And the man of God gave a word of knowledge that something is about to happen. And then this man is like, no, you guys are using all sort of psychology to lie to people and to, and to, and to steal from them and all of that. They will label you. So he called the man of God to a debate. And you know, they love this kind of debate. They think the word of God it's just a pamphlet or, or, or an article or, or, or an academic paper that you can write and then you can sit and debate on it. They just want to debate. And by the way, he called this man 
into an interview he says i want to engage you i can prove to you that those miracles and the prophetic word and things you're talking about it is all a lie it is not happening the man of god was confused the man of god began to seek the face of god praying god watch that god was not saying anything hallelujah and bible says that on the day of the interview the day that they call for the interview the man of god showed up and when the man of god showed up and, and they were on stage this eight this guy began to shout i can prove to you that there is nothing like prophecy word of wisdom or word of knowledge you guys are thieves lying to the people just as the man of god was about to open his mouth the lord spoke to him and said ask him what is he doing about the arthritis he has on his right shoulder for the past five years hallelujah <laughs> and bible says that when the when the man of god said to him oh you don't believe in prophecy you don't believe in word of knowledge well god says i should tell you what have you been doing or what are you going to do about the arthritis that you have on your shoulder for the right shoulder for the past five years and suddenly the agent was like how did you know i says oh don't worry about how i know you said there is no word of knowledge or word of prophecy i came to let you know that you are just a tiny speck god knows you before you became a clot of blood in your mother's womb god knows you if you prove me wrong i will tell you the day you were born where you were born even the food you ate last night i will prove to you the secret all the secret things you have done before i will label all of them to you and this guy was like tell me who is this god you said you are serving again i want to know this god hallelujah somebody there is a god who is alive forevermore as long as the heavens and the the skies you see above it has been there you came to meet the blue sky you would die and go and this blue sky it will still be there there is somebody called god sustaining it you understand last night i was watching a documentary and it says that there was uh, you know uh, um in, in 1919 there was a there was a, an expedition to space where the cam- cameras took pictures of the earth and the earth was like a tiny speck hanging in there this is where human beings live there was life on here but that is the tiniest there are other planets jupiter and the rest huge and bigger sometimes three times or four times five times the size of this earth if the earth is that small as compared to other things imagine you on this earth you think that do you think the earth is big right <laughs> but you are just a tiny the tiniest spectacle that can ever ever walk on the face of this earth what am i saying to you i am saying to you that the promises god has promises over eight thousand of them they are intended to assure you they are intended to satisfy you they are intended to make you feel never to feel alone knowing that god is there and he is with you at all times 2024 if you are going to walk in the year don't walk alone don't walk in ignorance you must walk in the promise knowing what has god said concerning me for this year let me tell you god yesterday god had a plan for you for yesterday today god has another plan for you all days and all times and seasons are not the same you understand you must come to this realization the moment you are able to absorb this thing into your spirit i tell you your life will be on a different course and your life will begin to become better knowing what god has for me at this particular moment what god wanted to do with you 2023 is not the same as what he wants to do with you and for you in 2024 you must know what it is for you for 2024 somebody am i confusing you yet (laughs) hallelujah (laughs) i need you to get to understand this thank you so much thank you i need you to understand something that following the 
fall of man in the God created everything and God created man and put man on earth, gave man a garden and everything. Say, keep it. That was God's plan. He wanted man to have everything. But following the fall of man, when God, when man became short or became short of the glory of God, man fell. When in the intention of God for man in the beginning, it was a brilliant one. That everything, I have created everything for you. All that you want is there. Use it. Enjoy it. My glory is with you. As long as the glory of God is with you, you will succeed. You will have no need of anything. You are not going to worry about cancer. You are not going to worry about what to eat today. You are not going to worry about I am depressed, I am confused, and all of that. No, 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 no. You, man was not going to be worried about it. Why? The glory of the Lord was had covered the earth. It was with man. Man was being carried in the glory of God. Notice that man did not even didn't know he was naked until man sinned and man fell. And God, God, they say, where are you? And says, I am naked. Go ask him, how did you know you are naked? The glory had departed. When the glory departs, you will know that you are naked. Amen. The moment the glory of God departs from a man, the person becomes exposed. Take the glory of God as protection. Imagine that a shepherd stands with the sheep as long as the shepherd is standing there the sheep is safe when lions come when other creatures come the sheep knows that i have a protector who will protect me imagine brother michael standing right now with his children standing around him unless somebody try to come and say that he will snatch one of them that will, that's what you see macho is the hallelujah <laughs> Amen. And so as long as the shepherd was there, the sheep was safe. But the moment the glory departed, man became exposed. The glory was gone. And so man came into the fallen state. Hallelujah. The moment and the time when everything was easy, when you can get any and all that you want, where you were not being tormented by demons and spirit, all of those things, and the moment man fell because of sin and disobedience, everything man was exposed to all the things and to all the negativities, all the negative things, all the things that will cause you pain, frustration, the depression, and all of the hallelujah. All of that became something that man was now, was staring at man or became the state of man. Someday when we appear before God, we should ask this man called Adam, the man that God created, said, listen, Obraha, hallelujah, come here. <laughs> Come here, let me ask you. <laughs> what was wrong? What were you thinking? <laughs> we should be able to ask Adam that question. <laughs> what were you thinking? Hallelujah. What were you thinking when God said, Eat everything, but don't touch that one? And when Eve gave that to you, so you couldn't have said, No. Why? Don't you have self control? <laughs> oh my goodness. The question we will ask, Hallelujah. <laughs> Because when man fell, man lost everything. The glory departed. And so, God in dealing with man, now God was going to deal with man on a business day. Hallelujah. God was going to deal with man on business time because I gave everything to man, but man didn't know and could not watch over it. Man messed up. And so now I have to deal with man on business terms. If you will do this, then I will give you that. Hallelujah. If you will obey, then I will give you that. If you will seek my face, then I will do that. Hallelujah. You know what? Second Chronicles, the chapter number, number, number uh, 14, verse 7 says. Mm 
-hmm. Hallelujah. What does he say? He says, if my people which are called by my name shall what? Humble themselves. That is the number one instruction. And do what? And pray. And do what? Seek my face. And the fourth thing, turn away, turn from the wicked ways. Then will I hear them from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. You understand? So, man has to do all of these things for God to do what? For God to hear them, forgive their sins, and heal their land. Hallelujah. In other words, God is not listening to you if you are not doing all of these things. If you are not humble, if you are not praying, if you are not seeking his face, and if you've not turned from your wicked ways, first of all, God will not hear you from heaven. He cannot forgive you your sins and he will not heal your land. It means that God's ears are what? Are close to them that are proud. Proudness come because of the fallen nature of man. The glory has departed. Bible says that God used to visit Adam and Eve in the garden and have a conversation with them. Talk with them. Now man needs to do something extraordinary for God to hear you. Hallelujah. You need to be humble for God to give you attention. You need to turn from your wicked ways for God to forgive you your sins and even heal your land. Your land is sick. You have, you have become wicked. There is wickedness sitting in the heart of man like that. People wake up and the next thing they are thinking, how I can do bad. Hallelujah. A man wakes up and today I'm looking for, I need to find some girl by all means, by fire, by, by force. Hallelujah. I need to find a man to satisfy. Everything is all about the flesh and indulging in the flesh. Why? Because man has fallen. But following that, God said that now I know how to deal with man. If I'm going to deal with man, you know, I'm going to make sure that if only they will water, if only they will obey, I will deal with you based on promise. If you do this, then I will give you this. The truth of the matter is this. As for me, when I give a word, I will perform. But you must also hold your part of the bargain. Because I gave man a free check in time past and they messed it up. If you've messed it up, then you must do something to receive the promise. God is an all-knowing God. God is an all-powerful God. Even you, your children, imagine when they are messing up, you take their phone from them, you take their iPad from them. Go and take your bath. If you finish taking your bath, then you can come and take the iPad. Go do your homework. When you finish with your homework, then I will give you the iPad back. If you become naughty, Christmas, you are not going anywhere. I want to take you guys to, um, uh, uh, um, to um, uh, what, what, what's the name? Disneyland or Disney World. If you can get all straight A's, then I will take you. This is daddy and mommy making what? Bargaining transaction, transaction with their children. It is based on promise. You need to do this. If you do this, I will give you this. We got to a point where God, following the fall of man, God said that I will still love my people. I cannot abandon them. I can't cast them out. But I'm going to deal with them according to promises. Hallelujah. If you will do this, then I, the Lord, I change not. I will do this for you. I will give you that. That is what there are 8,000 promises. All you need to do is to begin to look at them and begin to work to absorb them into your spirit and see what the Lord will do for you. Amen? We've gotten to a time where you must trust and believe. 
God and obey him for something to fall into your hand. His promise. His promise is how he's dealing with mankind now. In 2 Corinthians, the chapter number 1, the verse number 20. Paul the apostle wrote to the church in Corinth and told and told them that for all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen unto the glory of God who is in him he is talking about all the promises of God now those who are in Christ Jesus those promises they are what they are yea they are yes hallelujah and in the same Christ Jesus, they are amen. Hallelujah. It means that they are confirmed. Can you see that? Paul was telling them plain, people of God, the dispensation and the time that we are in, there is only one way that these promises, that is over the 8,000 the 8, promises that you see in the Bible, the only way that you can assess and obtain them it is through one man and one man only that is god himself his son jesus christ in him the promises that you see the eight thousand promises you see in the bible they are yes and in him they are confirmed. You need to be in him to be able to obtain them. You need to be in him to be able to assess them. If you are not in him, how will you first of all get to know the promises? If you, don't, if you, if you are not in him, how will you be able to know how the promise will benefit you? You must be in him. Let me give an example. You must be in America to understand what it is to, under, to know what is in America you understand there are people who they live somewhere in other parts of the world and the way they speak about America as though they have been here they've lived in it America is a system if you've not lived in it you will not understand and so when people think that you, know, you are in America and so you have all the money in the world and so you should send me somebody said can you send me $300 say, hey what do you mean $300 as, as though it is so easy hallelujah you can ask this man the way he, he has to go to warehouse and wait several hours before he can get his minimum wage hallelujah to get hundred dollars in a day it is not a joke if you drive you have to drive till your waist begins to hurt before you can get hundred dollars a day you must be in, in, in a system to understand how the system works and how the system operates before we got here, we thought that America was heaven. Everything, the money was there. You can quickly, oh, as soon as you get there, you should be able to get money to buy lands and all of that, to do all the things, drive in the flashes of cars and whatever it is. That was a certain perception we had. But perception is not reality. You understand? When you step into reality, you will know that things are not as they seem. So, for all the promises of God, they are vested in Christ Jesus. You must be in him. You must accept him and begin to walk in him and begin to know him for the promises to begin to manifest in your life. Don't just sit on the fringes and don't just be here a Sunday to Sunday Christian and think that oh because I went to church on Sunday here it is enough. It's okay. I'm, I can get the promise. Do you know Christ Jesus? You must know him. Even Paul the apostle who wrote about half of the new testament uh, he came to a point and conclusion uh, and said that i may know him and the power of his resurrection uh, he was seeking to know this god and know him better how well do you know him if you want to walk in the promises if you want to assess and obtain the promise uh, and absorb them then you must know who carries and keeps the promise the promises they are in him if you know him, then you can obtain them and assess them. Hallelujah. You must know him. When we speak of promises 
we can talk about promise of deliverance from evil. That's what I showed you from Second Chronicles. Deliverance from evil. There is a promise of provision that God says he will provide for you. There is a promise of hope for the lost and the hurting. There are many who are lost. They are confused. It says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It is a promise that God is giving. Come. Don't sit out there. You are hurting, but you feel so proud to work in. Sometimes it's not as if they are proud. Sometimes they don't even know that when they come, their yoke will be easier. It says, come unto me. My yoke is easier to take on you. You must first of all come. If you are hurting and you are in pain, Christ is able to give you something that will take that pain away. He has something called love. It is so powerful that when it sits in your heart, it will it will rid you of all the bitterness and rid you of all the anger and the things that has been eating you up all this while. There are people, they have grown old suddenly because of bitterness. Amen? You look at a, like, like a 40 person, a 40 something year old. This person looks like 60 years old. You know why? It is all because of bitterness. Bitterness is like cancer. It will eat you up. Everyone that passes in front of you, you are angry at them. You think they are the cause of your problem. Everybody is the cause of your problem, but except you. Why? Why is that the case? Because this person hurt me, because one man hurt me, every man that I see is, 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 is demon. Because this woman broke my heart, all women are prostitutes. Oh, my brother. Hallelujah. The promises that God gives, they are to make your life better. Promise of deliverance. Promise of provision that God said he will provide for you. He will provide. You don't know, but before, between morning and evening, by the time the sun set, some way, somehow, food would have entered into your stomach. Have you thought about it? Eh? Some way, somehow, some way, somehow, food would have go- entered into your mouth, into your stomach. It is God providing. It is a promise of provision. It is an assurance. He cannot fail. That is who he is. But if you want to know if this thing will happen, then you must be in him. You must be in Christ. That is what the assurance it is standing in. It is like a light. It is always shining. It never dims. Hallelujah. That is the kind of God we are serving. A promise of health and healing. If my people who are covered by my name, they will humble themselves and pray. And seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear them from heaven. And I will what? I will forgive their sins. Okay? And heal their land. There is a promise of healing. I don't know who is listening to me and I don't know what kind of disease or what kind of sickness that you are suffering from. But I came to let you know today that there is a promise for whatever situation that you are confronted with. If it is sickness, there is a promise of healing for you. For he says, I am the Lord that healed thee. Hallelujah. For he sent forth his word and healed their diseases. Amen. They that dwell in Zion, they cannot complain of any sickness. It is a promise that God has given for those who dwell in Zion. Zion is the place of God. Those who make God, their God made their habitation. Those who have made God 
their habitation and their dwelling. Huh? You cannot complain of a sickness. Huh? This sickness cannot take you to the grave. No, 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 no. It's possible that you may be in pain. It's possible that you may be tired from working all of that. God is able to heal you. You must just know the promise. Absorb it. How do you absorb it? Huh? You must confess them every day. You get up in the morning. I confess I am no weak. I am strong. Do you know? Listen, I've been preaching since Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah, I preach. Tuesday, I preach. Wednesday, I had to go for some int- some some program somewhere. Thursday, even I was preaching. Friday, we were here praying. Last night, I was here. I had to preach with the people in Europe and in Africa. This morning, I am here. And in between that, I, had, I need my personal time to also seek the face of God. Last night, I want 11 p.m. I called my wife. I said, let us go and pray. says, man of God, I am tired. <laughs> and so go on your own. And I was in my prayer closet all by myself, seeking the face of God. Oh God, what is the word for today? You, I, I, I'm a man of God. I need to prepare. I cannot come and stand here and begin to tell you stories. You won't take me serious, and I know you will not even step a foot here again. <laughs> this man, God, is not serious. Hallelujah. <laughs> Listen, you, you, it's the promise of God. You must confess them. So when I get, I say, Oh God, I am strong, O oh Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He gives me strength. He gives me strength. Sickness cannot dwell in my body. I cannot be poor. I cannot be few. I am many. Abundance is my portion. You must learn to confess these promises. First of all, you must know them. That's the reason why today the essence of what I'm teaching is that you must know the promises first. When you know them, when it is absorbed into your system, then you can run with it and know that in the year 2024, I am not just working. I am working in faith because there is a promise ahead of me. Everything that he has promised me, I have to obtain them. I must obtain them. It is a must. I need to get to it by any means necessary as long as I am in this in Christ Jesus. He must know the promise. The promise of healing. I am not going to pay any bill to any medical facility. God forbid. No. It will not happen in the year 2024. Doctors will not get my money. Hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. Hallelujah. Demons cannot get to me this year. For I am covered. For Bible has told me in Psalm 91 that he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty I will say of the Lord he is my refuge he is my strong time. you need to know the promise of God for your life when you know them you, then you can walk in them when you know them you speak it out you confess it you speak it and the more you speak the people begin they, they get afraid of you say, ah, why is this person confessing because as for this person we thought he was always confessing negativity well 2023 you had me but not 2024 2024 i am walking according to the promise and that i will prosper in all things that i will do i will be rich in all things that i will do i will excel in all things that i will do i will live the best moment of my life in 2024 because i know what god has said concerning life and as long as i have life in me i will walk in that on that tangent the promises of god the promise of peace hallelujah he promises peace that you have the peace of mind you, the, where you are not anxious you are not depressed you are worried how am I going to pay this bill uh, how is this going to be if you know the promise you don't worry about all of those things know the promise and don't walk in depression don't walk anxious and depressed thinking that their collection they are coming they are, they are coming to, 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 to take from me They've taken my name to collection. So what? When you begin to confess peace, when they call you, they call you. So sir, we were calling to come and collect, but it appears that the bill has been paid. Even though you have not taken money out of your pocket, there is a promise called provision that has been released so that you have your peace of mind. 
Let's go to Isaiah chapter number 41, verse 10. I want to talk to you. I want to share with you what the promise is of time is going. Hallelujah. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter number 41, verse 10. It says, Fear thou not. This is God speaking. Amen. Isaiah, the prophet, he had a glimpse into the life of Jacob who became Israel. And in the trying moment of Jacob's life, Jacob, the man that God really loved, the man that God established the nation of Israel from his loins, he got to a place he was worried. He was worried because he was living in a dispensation where man had fallen and the glory had departed. And so if God was, was going to deal with him, God had to deal with him according to promise. This guy, Jacob, he was a rascal. He was a thief. Hallelujah. He, I'm telling you, he would devise strategies to, to, to steal from his own brother, his own father. He deceived his own father to take the blessings from his brother. But God knew him. And God knew his heart. God knows the heart. Hallelujah. Oh, I said, God knows your heart. Sometimes people will, people will use your past against you. Because you did this. You know, human beings, the way we think, there's some will. Because you did this in the past, there is that propensity that you will do the same thing tomorrow. Hallelujah. Man will not give you a second chance. This is all dumb mind here. Hallelujah. We know his past. Forget about what you know about me in the past. Because I am not in my past. I am in my now. And I am in my future. Where God is my shining light. My steps are ordered by God. So God said to him, fear not. It is a promise that God is giving to him. Fear not. It means that there is fear in this life. Somebody can get to a place where you are scared. Oh, I have been there before. I have been there before. I was so scared. I didn't know. Somebody going to catch me and deport me? Are they going to evict me and all of that? Fear can sit in your heart. But the promise is that fear not. Hallelujah. Fear not. Why? For I am with the God so that he is with thee. The Lord told Jacob and Israel, I am with you. That is the reason why you cannot be afraid. And do not be dismayed. Do you know what it means to be dismayed? It means that you are in what we call distress. Hallelujah. Don't be distressed. Hmm? You are panicking. Eh? When you are in distress, you are panicking. Your palms are all wet. Hallelujah. <laughs> your heart is beating fast. Hallelujah. Your mouth is dry. Every, your, your, your eyes, your, for days you cannot sleep because you are what? You are in so much distress and you are anxious because you, are not, you don't know what is coming. The Lord said, do not be dismayed for I am thy God. First of all, don't be afraid because I am with you. The second is that don't be distressed because I am your God. Who is your God? Hallelujah. My God is not some river somewhere. My God is not a tree somewhere. Hallelujah. My, listen, if the tree is in Africa and you are in America, <laughs> how would you deal with that situation? My God, he is a spirit. He is omnipotent. He is omnipresent. He is omniscient. This God, he is everywhere. He knows my whereabouts. Even when I'm asleep, he is still alive. He says, I am thy God, for I am thy God. I am the all-powerful one. If you are looking for power, I am that power that you are looking for. But he gives this assurance again that I will strengthen you. When you are in distress and when you are all weak and your shoulders fall and you don't know what to turn, I will be your strength. I will strengthen you. In your weakness, I will be that strength that you need. Man becomes weak when we are going to turmoil. In this year, there is the possibility that you get to a point, you throw in the towel, I'm tired. But said, I will strengthen you. The moment you are pushing, and it feels as though the tent is not pushing, 
don't give up because it is not by your own strength you understand it is a god that is behind you he is the one that gives you strength to push past have you imagined that the things that you went through some years ago those things could not eliminate they could not kill you and here you stand today do you know how you pull through it is because god pressed you through he pushed you through there was a strength that came upon you when you yourself you didn't know sometimes you say how did i even do this how did i come out of this situation it is not you there is a strength that comes from god almighty that strength is what pushed you to where you are now he says that i will help you he will help you he knows that you need help Mm. God knows that you need help. In the way, in this work of the ministry, I need help a lot, and so I rely on this God more than ever. Hallelujah! I cannot rely on you, Sister Ya, Brother Mike. I cannot rely on you. If I rely on you, the day you fail, it means that I will have heart attack, and then I said, "Oh, then, then, then pass on." No, 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 no. I cannot rely on you because you cannot help me it is only god that will help hallelujah god will bring you around god will bring you when god brings you it is god giving me help you understand <laughs> uh, whenever god brings somebody i acknowledge that it is god that has brought help unto me you are the help that god is talking about when god says that he will help me you are the help god is talking about you are the help. Somebody say, I'm the help. <laughs> you are the help that God is talking about. It is God that brings the help on Jesus. I will help you. I will bring you people. They will be able to hold your hand so that you, you will stand. You will not collapse and fall. Thinking that I have abandoned you. No, I have not abandoned you. I will help you. This, this, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I will hold. It means that I will sustain you when god is sustaining something sometimes men we think that oh this thing oh it's, it's collapsing no 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 before we realize the thing has jumped up again it means that what there is a hand that is sustaining it there is a hand that is keeping that thing above it will never ever fall to the ground it is god that is keeping that thing standing strong it is God's promise unto you that I will do all of these things for you, oh Jacob. I will do all of these things for you, oh Israel. I will do all of these things for you, oh James. It is God who has said that He will do all of these things for you. You must know His promise. These things that I'm sharing with you, they are all the promises of God. I will be with you, oh, I will be your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you. I will uphold you. These are promises. Just don't be afraid. Just don't get yourself in that thing called fear. Because fear will kill you before your time. Many have died out of fear. Hallelujah. If fear gets to you, you will go and commit suicide within a second. You will drink poison because fear has come to live in your heart. It is a spirit. When that thing called fear, if you begin to hang around your neck, somebody, if God does not help you, the things that you will do, you will mess up. You will mess up. But God forbid that you will mess up. Hallelujah. In John, the chapter number 16, the verse number 33. The John, John chapter 6, verse number 33. And John... The beloved of God spoke and says, These things I have spoken unto you. Jesus spoke. He says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have what? Peace. Amen. These things that I've told you, they are all promises that I have just told you. And so you need to know these things so that you have peace. Says, in the word ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. We have overcome the world. It is time. Let us rise up on our feet. We are about to end the service right now. The Lord said he has said, or spoken all of these things to us that 
we might have peace he has given us all of these promises so that we might have peace that our minds and our heart will be at peace for in this world in this fallen world we shall have tribulation but we need to be of good cheer why because christ has overcome the world deuteronomy the chapter number 38 31 verse 8 as we are ending deuteronomy 31 verse 8 one of the many promises that the lord god gave unto the nation of israel deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8 hallelujah thank you mighty god thank you for your promises hallelujah we believe your promise we believe it we believe it we believe your promise he says and the lord he it is that doeth go before thee he will be with you he will not fail thee neither forsake thee fear not neither be dismayed the same thing hallelujah that was said here this same thing has been repeated by by the prophet isaiah it i am the lord that goeth before thee i go ahead of you it is god that is going ahead of you in the year 2024 you don't know the road you don't know what is in the year 2024 but god has gone ahead that is why you must be in him if god is driving the train or driving the vehicle he knows the road you don't know the road and so keep quiet and stop complaining and stop trying to trying to become the second driver turn here turn here you don't know the road and you are you are complaining turn where hallelujah one of these days if you sit in the plane tell tell tell, tell the pilot pilot turn here and let's see what what will happen hallelujah <laughs> have you seen any passenger in the plane trying to tell the the the, 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 the pilot turn this way turn right turn left no the pilot you sit back come go and sit in your economy and just be quiet and, and, I, and allow the, the pilot to take you to your destination and get home safely to your family amen god is the one driving he is going ahead he is with you he says he will be with you he is with you as he went before the nation of Israel, like a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, this it is he, the same God, who is going with you. He will not fail you. He has never failed. Neither would he fail. He cannot fail. He is too big to fail. He will never forsake you. He cannot forsake you. To forsake means that he will just abandon you there. No, this God, he cannot do that. He cannot abandon you. So don't be in distress. Don't be stressed out. Thank you, mighty God. Begin to thank the Lord for his word. The Lord, I thank you for your promise. And I thank you that your word has come forth. Your word has assured me that all your promises to me, they are yea and they are amen in Christ Jesus. And I am walking in this promise. In this year 2024, I will not fail. I will not stumble. I will not be dismayed. I will not be stressed out. But I am walking in this promise. I am moving according to the promise in the mighty name of Jesus. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Li bande kara da so li vaden rapa ne kevele bada mis kava ne savante leben yakata vadan e kava rasha vada le kevene rapa deskavo yantu le vene rapa ban e para kados keve rakevene shavala kadon rapa na kale veskavadan yekare vesavala vakore iskavala masku vene deden. O kevele presa balaya, iramba ba 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 ban, rabala ba kaban, 
in the name of Jesus, huh? thank you for your word that is assuring huh? in this year. Huh? We walk according to your promise, huh? the promises that are ye and amen in Christ Jesus. Oh God, huh? I absorb the promise into my life huh? and I confess that, huh? that I shall not die. Huh? I will live and declare the works of God huh? right here on earth. Huh? Sickness cannot get to me. Huh? I am healed of every sickness and infirmity. Divine provision is available unto me. I receive all that I need and all that I want. My hands are blessed with the blessings of God. In my going out and my coming in, I am blessed. A help cometh unto me. Help from the north, the south, the east, and the world. Help cometh to the ministry, O God. Help in every area of my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I do not lack. I am blessed and I give unto many people. I give unto nations. I give to support many others huh? because I am blessed. Huh? My hands are blessed. Huh? My hands are full of oil in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Huh? I will not bury my children. Huh? I will not bury any member of my ministry. We will not die this year. Huh? We will live we will live. We will live. Promotion comes to us. Everywhere we go, we are promoted. We are promoted. Speed comes into our life. Whatever we do, speed, abundance is our portion. Speed, abundance is our portion. This church, it expands. This church is filled. This church, it grows. It increases in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.